Hi, fourth and fifth graders. And this week in art, we are starting your ecoregion landscape project. We are going to be creating four different ecoregion landscapes on one large sheet of paper. Here's my finished work. We'll start with two of our landscapes today and then two more next week. So what you'll need for this project is the large sheet of heavy paper that went home at the last supply pickup. It's a 12 by 18, it was folded in half in your art kit. And you'll need a black Sharpie and a pencil. And so the first thing that you're gonna do is take that large sheet of paper, it's already folded once, you're gonna open it up and fold it in the other direction. So against that crease, you're just gonna fold it in half again. So what we're doing is creating four equal size rectangles for our landscapes. And then there we go. Open it up and we have four of our rectangles. All right, next step is going to be to label each one. We have that done already. So, you're gonna label in each rectangle at the very top in the center using your black Sharpie. And you're gonna label them. You can pause this right now so that you can label and look at the screen. You're, we're labeling with Cascade Mountains, Coast Range Mountains, Columbia Plateau, Basin and Range. All right, so once you have those all labeled. Today we are going to focus on drawing our landscapes for the Cascade Mountains and the Columbia Plateau. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fold this in half so you can see that on screen well. All right, so the Cascade Mountains, I'm gonna show you a picture for reference. And I'm also going to post the picture so you have it to look at at home. We're looking at very green, lush, big snow-covered mountains, lots of trees. All right, so we're gonna start with all of our landscapes when we're drawing a landscape. One important detail is a horizon line. And a horizon line is that line that's separating your land from your sky or your water from your sky. So that's the first thing that we'll do is draw a horizon line. It's not quite in the middle, a little bit below the middle of the page. So I'm gonna draw my horizon line. And now I'm going to focus on my middle ground, which is just above my horizon line. We have our foreground is below the horizon line, our middle ground above the horizon line, and then our background is behind our middle ground, so usually the sky. So I'm gonna focus on the details in the middle ground, which is that big snowy mountain. So I'm gonna add a mountain. I don't want it to be a real straight line. I wanna show that this is a mountain with lots of texture on it. And then I'm gonna add some details to my background. So in my sky, I'm gonna add a few clouds. I could add a sun or a moon. It's up to you. All right, and now I'm gonna come down and focus on my foreground. And I'm gonna add that big lake that I see in the picture here. You can search some other pictures and see if there's other details that you wanna add. I'm just going by this one I found here. I thought that was a really pretty picture of the Cascade Mountains. So I'm gonna add a water feature that big lake in front of the mountain. And then I'm gonna add some trees. And for the Cascade Mountains, we wanna add some native trees. So we'll be adding Douglas firs and grand firs. And I want to show you some pictures. Here's our grand fir. And this is a detail that needs to be in your Cascade Mountains landscape. And your Douglas fir. So these are a little more full than the grand fir. 
All right, so I'm gonna add those trees. When we're adding details like this to our foreground, whatever is closest to us in our view, so if we were there standing in front of these trees, these would be, these would look the biggest to us. So I'm gonna draw real big grand fur here. And then I'm gonna get smaller as they move further away from my view. So here's my next grand fur and it's a little bit smaller because I'm imagining that this is further away from me. And then another one even smaller. And your trees do not have to be in the same place that I'm putting mine. You do have to label them. So these were my grand furs and I'm gonna write that right above them. Just one label is fine for them if you put trees in other places. You don't have to label them all. You just need one label for each kind of tree. All right, and then I'm gonna add some Douglas firs. So a little bit more of a wider tree. And this landscape is just really basic, simple lines right now because we'll add most of our details using color in a couple weeks. So just really basic, basic drawing. Don't worry too much. We're gonna use oil pastels to really bring out the details when we add color. All right, so I'm gonna add some more grand furs. And I'm gonna label these here. Douglas fir. You can use Sharpie for those labels too if you want. Or if you do use pencil, just be careful not to cover them up when we do add color. All right, so that's it for my Cascade Mountains landscape. And now I'm gonna move on to my Columbia Plateau. Let me show you a photo. All right. So we're looking at grasslands, pretty flat, quite different than the photo we were just looking at of the Cascade Mountains. Not many trees, not any trees at all really, just a lot of different grass plants and um, flat hills. All right, so I'm gonna start again with that horizon line, a little bit below the middle of my page. And then I'm gonna add some of those kind of rolling hills below in my foreground. Maybe I'll make these stand out a little bit by using different colors and blending some different colors when I add color. And then there's gonna be a lot of grass plants here on these hills. So I'm gonna kind of show that with pencil right now, but really I'm gonna add all of that texture and color with my oil pastels in a few weeks, but I kind of just wanna show myself where I'm gonna do that. So let's see. when you look at my finished, landscape of the Columbia Plateau, you see that all those details of the grasslands really come out when you add the color. So right now I'm kind of just showing myself where I'm gonna want those to be. And then in my sky, I think I'm gonna do um, a sunset, maybe a few little clouds. Because we're doing so many landscapes on one page, Think about making your skies a little bit different so you don't have four identical backgrounds. All right, so that is it for this week's step. Next week, we're gonna do our next two landscapes and then the following week is when we'll add our color. So have fun with this and I'll see you guys next week.